Hello everybody, today we are going to create a mini database. What do I mean by mini data database? It will have a basic functions of database. It will be able to add some kind of information. In our situation it will be only people. It will be able to show that people will be able to add these people, to save them to the file, to load them from the file, to search them by, for example, name, or to remove a person from the base. So uh, it is the program that will write to the with all these functions. Okay, so let's start the adventure. <laughs> What should you st we start from? I think we should start from the interface. We should communicate somehow with the user. So we should send him a menu, right? Menu, something like that. And we should, for example, allow him to do a few things. For example, add person. And what else we should allow him? We should allow him to, for example, show person. Oh, show all people inside the data database. And other options that we will add later. But now we have got a small problem. How to get the op option that the guy want to choose, the user. Well, we can create a temporary variable here, for example, test, and we can get it with, for example, C in get function, and later we can switch to the test, and if the character is, for example, one, then we can send to the output test, or you can just invoke a function here that would add a person. Right now we are just breaking this program a little uh, so uh, we are not doing everything like it should be but we are just testing right so it's test test two and now when we run this program as you can see and was not declared in that function end line sorry it's end line when you run this program we can now add person, show people, but when I click something, I need to type enter in order to do something, in order to choose something from the menu. menu. So it's not cool. I would like to type one and it should instantly invoke one of these functions here. How to do it? Well, we will use the get character function, which is not coming from the C in object. It is inside the library, which is called like that. And the difference between this and that get function is that it will get immediately the character that is put into the input stream that is waiting for character. So well, now when I type one, as you can see, it instantly showed us test here. When I click two, instantly test two. So it's now working fine. But now we have got the problem. Our program is ending instantly. How to make it so it won't end instantly? Well, for example, we can use a loop, right? We can do all the time things that are inside unless, for example, somebody will click escape on the keyboard. So do while test is not equal to 27. 27 is a number in ASCII table that represent escape on the keyboard. So right now, when you run this program and I type escape, as you can see, the program is ended. But when I type one, as you can see, uh, we have got here a test, so we invoke something here, and we have got the game menu. One, 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 two, two, two. But when you type something wrong, 
on the menu menu appears nothing else okay so it's not the thing that we would like to achieve here exactly but now at least the program is not ending how to do it that way that we see the menu but the things like that here will appear each time we choose something from the menu well we can use a function which is called system and uh, we can use a clear screen option here. Uh, CLS stands for clear screen. So it is clearing a screen and we also have to include this, uh, this function here, which is from the C, uh, C standard library. And now when we run this program, um, CSTD, sorry. As you can see now when I type one, two, nothing happens. When I type anything else, nothing happens. When I type escape, I am getting out of the program. What's going on? Well, there is a small problem. Now when I click one here, it's taking it to the switch and it's run and it's outputting test. But you see, the program is not waiting for, for us to see it. It's just clearing the screen and again, we can see the menu. So we should somehow stop the program for a second here so we can allow our user to read this thing here or to do something here, right? So we could wait for him to, for example, click enter. I think it would be the best idea. And how to do it? Well, we can use, for example, loop y here and use the cat character function and if that function is not equal to exactly 13, then this function will forever be run here. So it means that when I run this, now when I add persons, you can see now we have got test here and now I can click every possible character and it will not mm, stop, even escape. It's now waiting only for enter. Now when I click enter, as you can see, Finally, the uh, thing that was here was cleared. And again, we can see the 13, 15 and 16 lines here. So it's now working pretty fine. Uh, so it is just requiring to enter the enter. <laughs> we can create a function here, require enter. and we can implement it. <clears throat> and before it, we should ask for enter so the guy will know what to do <laughs> because it would be frustrating if we didn't say he has to click the enter, right? So click enter to continue. Now, as you can see, Mm, oh, sorry, I didn't invoke it. We should invoke it here. One, it's waiting for enter. Nothing else will work. So I have time to read what happened here or do something here, right? Okay. So we have got the working interface. So we should now implement functions. For example, adding function. So let's create here a function which will be called add person. So this function will add a person to our database. And where we would like to add this person? I think we should store it temporary in our memory and after it, we could save it to the file. There is a small problem now, how we should write it. We could use classes, we could use a structure, but you know, I don't know if all of you know classes good enough. I don't want to confuse you. And because of it, we will use the structures here, um, which are easier to understand. You can also, you can of course change this program to the classes if you want to train. I think it would be good training of classes if you want to. But right now I'd like to show you how to write to files, how to load from files how to play with them, right? So, because this is the course about the 
uh, phi is not about uh, the classes, right? So uh, we will use the structure here and we'll add person by using the structure. So we'll create a structure and we will call it, for example, person. And this person will be presented by four uh, different um, values. So for example, a name, which will be string, so by surname, by the age, which can be short because age is short, it will not be a big number, a string, which will represent telephone. Why string? Because in telephone we can use sometimes parentheses or other things like that, right? Okay, so it's looking like that and now we should create a variable which type will be person, for example, people, and for example, it can be created for 20 of them. So our dat database can't be bigger than 20 person. Of course, you can type here 500 or something like that, but it will take more memory. But both of these solutions is not good because as you can see we are in situation like that losing memory in situation like that we can run into problem if somebody want to insert more people the best solution to this is something what is called list vector but unlikely we don't know it yet at least not from the courses that i uh, created I will talk about things like that in the next course about the library that allows uh, exactly how uh, how can you store more people more uh, more things dynamically um, by uh, in professional way. Right now we will use this thing here. Okay, so cre we created people here. For, well, we created a place for 20 people and we can add person, a new person right now here. So what first thing we should do? We should ask for data. So uh, put, well, we can ask for name, name, type name, see in and we are getting into the people and now we should uh, use here some kind of index our name now what index we should use it here I think it should be zero but later when we add the first person it should be one then two then three then four so I think we should create a global variable that will represent how many people were added to the database so people in database. By default, global variables uh, that are integer are zero. So we have got a zero here now. We can send it to the output. So people in database or number of people, number of people in database, you can send it here. And when we add a person, we should increase it and we should use it as index because at the start it will be zero. After adding one person, it will be one, then two, then three, and it will follow like that. So, bam, bam, and bam. So type a name, type a surname, and type an age, and type telephone. Now we should change also names of variables and it should work right now. When you run this program and we could add person, as you can see, it's not doing anything good because, well, we didn't invoke the function. So let's invoke it, add person. One, type a name, Arkadiusz. My surname, age, telephone, Click enter to continue. And we added that person, but we can't show them. Because of it, we should create a function that will show all these people. Oh well, and we should also 
say exactly how many people are here <laughs> because I forgot to type it here. So it's going to zero and uh, something like that. It's one. Okay, so let's create a function that will show how many people are in the database. So void show people. And let's implement it at the end of file and let's invoke it so we do not forget. Well, I do not forget again. When somebody clicked to, I want to show people. Okay, I think that firstly we should check if people in database is bigger than zero because, well, what do we want to show if it's not bigger than zero? Otherwise, we would like to send to the output that there is nobody in database. Why the hell are you here? <laughs> okay, so people in database and now we can show all of them by just going through all of the people in array, right? So if you want to go through the array, we would like to use what loop. So let's create a for loop integer uh, i when i is lower than the people in database then i plus plus and you can send to the output that person with person index which is i plus one why is i plus one because well we well, well we could use the i here but I think we should use i plus one because um, it's easier to say to people that index is starting from one than from zero. Only programmers understand that index is starting from zero, right? <laughs> so person index is one and then we can type a name which is from people i dot uh, name let's now copy it name surname age and telephone and now surname age and telephone now let's run the program add a person bam 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 show all people as you can see we can now see them we can add more of them show people and as you can see we can see all of them at once it would be a good idea to add here end line so it will be easier to see how it looks like we could also add end line here so it will be look look better <clears throat> like that or as you can see now it's looking better 